Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day three of the Women in Translation Readathon. And I had to give myself a good talking to during yesterday's vlog to give my head a shake and realize this is not a race, a competition, or a university course. So I need to give my slow down, give myself a break, and just focus on the enjoyment that I'm getting out of these wonderful books I'm reading and whether I finish any or all of them by the end of the readathon or whether I extend, I, I added three days to the beginning and if I need to add three more to the end to finish up, it doesn't matter. So that really sank in and so this morning I've just sunk, I have just sunken, sunk, sunken into the books and have been reading for about an hour and a half. And uh, I will avoid spoilers by not mentioning where these little narrative threads came from. But one of the things that I really love about reading several books at the same time is the synchronicities that just emerge naturally, uh, thematically or otherwise. And I uh, just had a, a really amazing uh, set of those this morning. In one book, and, and this one actually wasn't from my reading this morning, but from this book, some of the most heart-rending parts of the story are how the female characters feel pressured into prostitution in order to survive and or, or propositioned by a, being offered food in return for sex or money but sometimes food and then in another novel a young woman is begged by her brother to get money because he needs money very quickly and she goes to the jewelry shop and it's very clearly mentioned that the jeweler the goldsmith had been leering at her every time she walked by and so I was sure that she was going there to you know get, give herself up for money to help her brother out uh, and in fact no she pawned or she sold uh, a family heirloom a piece of jewelry that she had and got very little money for it but that just really made it a connection between jewelry and you know value the value of a woman's body her only sense of value in a world controlled by men and then another the next book was about a bunch of factory workers and one of the managers sold gold necklaces on the black market and also uh, exchanged sexual and also fathered children with almost all of the women in that factory and he would sell they would save their wages for months and months and finally buy a gold necklace from him and then he would tip off the police who bought the necklace and the police would go and confiscate the necklace and he would sell it to the next woman. So, yes, jewelry, value, economy, market, bodies, sex. Hey, so this is a little meeting room in the drug company where I teach on Monday nights. I have uh, tonight two private students, 30 minutes each. Starting in about 15 minutes, I'm sweaty. It's still really hot, but I'm having a fabulous day. I This little introduction was filmed after the fact, but this is my little introduction to a, a wedding party that one of my classes threw for Kenji and I. This is a group of about 15 senior citizens. I teach them in classes of about five students each, Monday mornings for three hours. And they, uh, put this little luncheon party on for us in lieu of classes today. Kenji had never met any of them and they were just so delighted to meet Kenji and asked us lots of questions, some very personal. Do you guys bath together? <laughs> anyway, it's very sweet. I'm just going to give you a couple minutes of footage from that because that was delightful. I didn't expect it to be so lavish. The, when, look at the cake and you know everything was quite, quite lovely. So Kenji was pleased, I was pleased. And then after that, just some footage of me walking here. Second 
American wedding party. Wow. 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 Oh my God. That is incredible. Thank you. Here's a lovely summer sight. Well, I just heard the loudest. I'm a little freaked out right now. I just heard the loudest clap of thunder of my life. It must have been right overhead. I'm at Nakano Station. I was just stepping out of the train. And uh, thankfully, it wasn't only me that ducked and kind of uh, started running away. I thought a bomb was going off in the train. It was just like right there. And. Uh, Lightning and whatnot, but anyway, uh, I'm awake now. Oh dear, let's get you out of those wet things. <laughs> hey, well, here I am. I am. Uh, I've sought refuge in the lobby of this, this the overheated, non-air-conditioned lobby of this. I assume it's, yeah, it's like an apartment building because this is just... It's, it's, it's 
actually scary. I, uh, the thunder is so loud and the lightning is right overhead. I, and I only live... Watch the lightning there. That man's walking without an umbrella. He'll be soaked to the... I don't think we were supposed to have a typhoon, but this seems like typhoon weather. So... I'm not going anywhere soon, even though it's hot. At least I'm dry. Um, so bad news. Ah, it's so loud. I've never heard lightning that loud. I've never heard thunder that loud. Look at that rain. I live two, three blocks from here, but I'm not walking home. somewhere and drink and wait but there's nobody no place where I wouldn't there's no place close enough well how do you like my vlog so far <laughs> I'd like to actually open that door just to get some air in I wonder if we could do that for a few minutes Me off. I mean, it's gonna make it louder, but uh, um, so while I'm waiting, I'm gonna bail on this. I'm sorry, people, but I just don't do well with nonfiction, and you don't really care about my story. <laughs> this storm is something else. Yeah, there's. A lot of stuff happening. Yep, this may be where I'm sleeping tonight, in which case I won't bail because I don't have anything else to read. Um, I just don't do well with nonfiction. I'm sorry that this it's not compelling because I don't like the writing. If I could find non-fiction that was as well written as my expectations are of fiction, it would be okay, but... So, I'm gonna look for some kind of... Maybe a short collection of short stories by Asian writers or African, or it doesn't matter. Something translated, or essay, something very short, or a memoir that's good. I just... It's not awful writing, but mediocre non-fiction prose does not hold my interest, and that's what's happened. The stories were harrowing, but I didn't care because the writing didn't draw me in. So, that's what always happens with non-fiction. I'll stop shouting at you over top of this thunderstorm and uh, browse on script and see what I can find. Hey, well, I made it home. <laughs> I waited there for 15 minutes maybe 20, and it finally died down, and now I'm home. I have found a really exciting memoir, which I'm dying to try, but there's only one glitch. It's written by a Cambodian woman. It's written by a Cambodian woman, but she wrote it in English. Can't, can't I make it count? She's translating herself from her native tongue into English. Surely it will count. It, doesn't it sound fascinating? Her name is, I don't know how to pronounce her name, I'm sorry, but Soma Noradom. And she is a princess of the Cambodian royal house. <laughs> and she went into exile with her parents uh, during the time of the Khmer Rouge. So she was born in 1969 and went into exile from 1975 until she returned to Cambodia in 2010. So she has been back, she has been back in Cambodia for eight years and she is now a journalist in opposition to the regime. She's vi turned very left wing and is alienated from most of the royal family because of her political views and her memoir is called her memoir which is published in english and written in english is called royal rebel 222 pages and it's about her life and especially focused on her return to cambodia from 2010 and this sounds like a sean book i mean i have to be really interested in the topic to get into nonfiction and uh, 
a, a rebellious Cambodian princess? I'm so there. So, people, I need your permission. Can't I make this count for the Women in Translation Readathon? Even though she wrote it in English, but she's Cambodian and she's translating in her head. You know, it should be a Royal Rebel by Soma Noradom, translated into English while writing by so Soma Noradom. Come on, people, enable me. I think I'm going to do it because I previewed it on Kindle and it seems not only fascinating and important, but fun. She lived in uh, California during her young life until she came back, so... Okay, I need your dis dispensation. Thanks for watching.